What do you know about Jehovah's Witnesses? They like to come to your house, three or four of them together, and knock on your door. Yes. Yeah. 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 Anybody ever encounter a Jehovah's Witness at your house after like one o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah, you got one. I mean, they usually, for me, it's like first thing in the morning, I'm not prepared for them. 6 a.m. or something, 7 a.m. I'm like, who's at my house? You know, so uh, maybe I'll, uh, if you see yours, tell them to come by my way about the same time. Stop coming so early. Anyways, anybody else? Anything besides they like to come knocking at your door? No? I've had long conversations with them. But Babies? Long they, conversations? But they... They're very stuck on a specific number of people making it to heaven. <laughs> they are. They are. 144,000 specifically. Right. right. So what they say. I'd be like, I'm not sure I'm going to make that list. I mean, over right. all these centuries, only 144. And they specifically know they're not going to make that list. So uh, it's a very interesting thought when you dig into their beliefs. So. Isn't that favorite attire camouflage? <laughs> camouflage? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Somebody else. <laughs> so uh, tonight we're going to talk about their leaders. So as we did with uh, the Islam and, and uh, the others, when you know you start with trying to understand a religion, you want to start with either who founded it or what it's based on, what person they follow, or something of that example. So uh, we're going to start with their with their background and how it got started. Uh, and we're going to go from there. So it's going to be a little bit of back and forth. Uh, I got Dad helping me out with some uh, some scriptures and things of that nature. So uh, get your, get a little bit of reading going on. So to the to the to the fact that they stop and knock at your door. This is very very interesting. Something that maybe we could take as I, as I talk to you guys about Islam and, and other such things. Uh, in the past that we've spoken on, if if we could take some things, the dedication that Muslims have to what they believe and how, hey, I'm not working, I have a holiday, I'm not eating, this is fasting time, or whatever it is, uh, with Jehovah's Witness, if we could take their knocking at the door thing, that would be awesome. So uh, I'll give it to you. The Jehovah's Witnesses have mapped out the entire United States. <clears throat> Think about this. Their organization has mapped out the entire United States so that every resident will be contacted at least once or twice a year by a team of door-to-door -door workers. Wow. wow. Wow indeed. Imagine if all the churches in Spring Hope got together and said, let's map out just Spring Hope and, and we'll all take uh, at least one or two doors so that everybody in Spring Hope will be, will be knocked on at least once a year by one of the churches here in Spring Hope and talk to them about Jesus Christ. Imagine if we how, how Spring Hope would be different, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how Jehovah's Witness do it, but they do it for the whole United States. And they keep really good records, and they, they, they know where they've been, and they know where they haven't been, and they know where they need to go, so they can knock on that door. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's about the only thing I can say of them is pretty cool. <laughs> Other than that, it's all down the hill. Um, they printed out a lot of stuff. Anybody know what their stuff is called? Anybody try to get somebody, they, they hand you stuff. Watchtower. Watchtower, yeah, 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 the Watchtower. Anybody know what their Bible is called? You know, here we use the King James and the New Living Translation. Anybody know what the Jehovah's Witness Bible is called? No? What, what? It's really thick, I've seen one. It's really, it's really thick. <laughs> well, you know, mine's kind of thick too, but the print is, they could probably see it on camera back there. The print is huge, so uh, it's not so small. Yeah, they, they have a, uh, I think it's the New World Translation, some of that effect, if somebody wants to Google that or something real quick. But uh, yeah, they have their own Bible, and it gets translated, and it gets updated, it gets revised, if I can say that. And so if you ever encounter a Jehovah's Witness, you ever try to get them to use your Bible, they won't do it. Mm -hmm. And if you ask them for, tell them scripture, even if you say, well, you know, the Bible says, they'll say, where? He said, well, like John 3.16, for example, they'll go to their Bible and open it up and read it from their Bible because they don't read other translations because that's satanic. Seriously, that's what they believe. Yeah. So, anyways, again, we use the King James here and the New Living Translation. Uh, we talk about the, the, the good parts of both and why we use them. Uh, 
uh, there's other translations out there. You know, the main thing that we tell folks is find a translation you can understand. Start with that, and then work your way on to, to bigger and better things. Um, anyway, their founders, uh, they were founded under a man uh, named Charles T. Russell. Um, he originally was dealing with, uh, you know, he was in the Protestant church, and he couldn't wrap his mind around hell and the mercy of God. It's very interesting. I've heard so many people talk about things like that, and he, he couldn't do it. And so he had issues with the Bible, he had issues with the doctrine of the church, and so he was like, you know what, I, I just can't. And he, he bounced. And he went to start talking with some, some uh, Adventists, Seventh-day Adventists, we know Adventists, mm -hmm. and uh, he kind of got hooked up with them, and out of them, he became the founder of the Jehovah's Witness when he started teaching what his belief and his doctrine and his thoughts on the Bible were. And so that all began 18-something, uh, I don't have it quite uh, wrote down here, but uh, in the 1800s, 1870s, 1850s, 1860s. So Jehovah's Witnesses have been around for quite some time. They weren't quite Jehovah's Witnesses then, but again, it, it progressed. Uh, this guy, um, Charles Russell, uh, he, he published uh, little sermons or, or, or series. It's called the Studies in Scripture. Um, Later, he began to use something called the Watchtower Magazine. I assume we're all familiar with Watchtower Magazine, right? Uh, their headquarters were in Pennsylvania. Uh, and then eventually, uh, something like 2000 something, 2016, 2000 something, moved to New York. I don't exactly remember when they moved to New York. Uh, this says in, in, in 1909, he moved the headquarters to New York. But again, there's, there's some background issues there. So let me just tell you a little bit about Charles. Early in his ministry, he calculated that Jesus was going to return visibly to the earth in 1874. That's a hard thing to preach. But he preached it. Uh, he did calculations, and uh, for many years he prophesied that Christ would return in 1874. Well, 1874 came and went. So uh, he changed his calculations, and he said that Christ was going to return 1914. I don't know how he was off by so much. He was off by quite a lot from 1874 to 1914. Speaking of the force of It's true. Uh, 1914 came and went, and again, Jesus didn't show up. So... Uh, he redefined the second coming to mean that Christ was going to return as an invisible spirit, a ghost, if you will. And he did, in fact, return in 1914 to set up the organization. So Jesus came in 1914, invisible, and set up the Jehovah's Witness organization. And that's what he began to preach and tell. So... This guy was a false prophet at best. So what was his New World Translation Bible Ah, that's a great question. I have to look that one up. Uh, anybody got Google? Anybody know? I'm, I'm just wondering if that was his interpretation based on what he had learned. I see. With no celestial you know, input. That's, that's great. That's great. I don't know. I, and, I, and again, I don't know what edition we're on. I know they revise it and revise it and revise it. Maybe chips back to the computer. Maybe he can... New World Translation, uh, uh, 1950. 1950? Okay. So, uh, does it say how many revisions we're at? Do you, do you know? Because I, I want to say they put a new one out like every year, every other year they put out a new one, but it's not. Uh, I'm not seeing revisions. Okay. Huh. Oh, yeah, here. Uh, oh. Last one was in 2013. 2013? Okay. So, it's not as frequent as I thought. But they put out a revision quite quite often. And when they do, you got to throw the old ones away completely. you got to get rid of them. 100% because they're now a different translation. It's kind of odd. It's a little cultish in that regard. But in any event. So, uh, false prophets. So, does the Bible talk about false prophets? Yes. So, I'm going to get Dad back there to tell us a little bit about one of the false prophets that he has that he looked up in the in the scripture and give us some information about that false prophet. So, go ahead, Dad. Um, I'm going to go with Balaam. 
2 Peter chapter 2, uh, 14 through 16, and Revelation chapter 2, 14. So, uh, second, second Peter, I'll just get loud with it. 2 Peter 2, 14. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. 2 Peter chapter 2, 14 through 16. 14 through 16. Okay. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed, accused children, forsaken the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, son of Bor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, but was rebuked for his own transgressions. A speechless donkey spoke with human voice and restrained a prophet's madness. Hmm. And then I'll go to Revelation chapter 2. While you're while you going to Revelations, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you just again, I'll give it to you in this translation. Uh, they commit adultery with their eyes, their, and their desire for sin is never satisfied. They lure unstable people into sin, and they are well trained in greed. They live under God's curse. Mm. They have wandered off of the right road and followed the footsteps of Balaam, son of Baal, who lived or loved uh, to earn money by doing wrong. Wow. Wow. False prophets. Go ahead. Revelation what? Uh, chapter 2, verse 14. Revelation 2, 14. But I have a few things against you. Uh, you have some there who hold the, re the teachings of Balaam, mm -hmm. who taught Balaam to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice sexual immorality. So you know the, the story of Balaam Oh, you read it out of yours. Yeah. This one here, yeah. Uh, I have a few complaints against you. You tolerate some among you whose teachings is like that of Balaam, uh, who showed Balak how to trip up the people of Israel. He taught them to sin by eating food offered to idols and by committing sexual sin. He taught them to sin. Interesting. Yeah, uh, Balaam was the prophet of God. Started out that way. But, of course, the, the, the lure of money changed him completely. Uh, at, at one time, uh, the, the story goes that uh, the, God sent a death angel to kill him, and he was riding his donkey, and he, his donkey fell to the ground, and he beat the donkey, and you guys can look it up, it's a great story, and, and, and finally after beating the donkey and beating the donkey, the donkey just told him, why are you beating me, Balaam? I haven't That's always done the right thing, always yeah. done good to you. So the donkey spoke, and I just, amazing. And, and of course, at that time, Balaam repented, but then he runs to uh, Balak, the king, who was a, a, a foreign king against Israel, and uh, he kept asking Balaam to prophesy against Israel. Of course, he wouldn't do it at first, but then he kept increasing the amount of money he would give him. So Balaam prophesied all kinds of stuff. The more money he gave him, the more he prophesied. <laughs> right. And in uh, and, and, uh, and Numbers, uh, uh, they, they, they finally got up with him and he was killed by the sword, is what the Bible tells. It, it, it reminds me now, I may be misremembering this, but I, I believe he used sorcery to try to contact God to get the prophet, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to get the prophecy out. Like, he had went from being a prophet of God to now practicing sorcery to try to mm -hmm. contact the spirit, so to speak. Like, it was just, he was in a mess. Was he soft? He, he was, no, no, no. Uh, you have, you have, a, you have these guys even today. They start out good, yeah, but then money gets them, and Balaam was a money got them. So their, their thoughts on things evolve. Honestly, that's what he said. That's what he said. That's anyway, what he said. So um, we're gonna we're gonna go into the next guy. Once uh, this guy Charles Russell died, um, he died in nineteen sixteen. And uh, again, I mean, he's a false prophet. Jesus is going to return. Jesus is going to return. And he, he is going to return. So in that way, he, he was correct. He's going to return. But then we have Jesus going to return at this time. And what does the Bible say very clearly? No man knows the day nor the hour. Mm -hmm. See, so we, we, can, we can predict in essence that we can see the timing, the handwriting on the wall. The Lord said in the last days, these things shall happen. And so as we see these things happen... We can say, oh, man, we're getting closer and closer. But to say he's going to come back, uh, you know, August 23rd, 1914 at 3 p.m. Yeah, right. It's not, that's not. Why don't you no. set a date? You're done. 
Right. That's no man knows the day or the hour. Thus, I use 1940. Anyways, but no man knows the day or the hour. So, anyways, if people just knew their word, if they just knew the Bible, they would have been fooled by this. But good old Christians who just can't seem to read that book. Moving on. Um, so then after this fellow died in 1916, uh, the Watchtower organization was taken over in 1917 by a very dynamic man uh, named Joseph Franklin Rutherford. It was under Rutherford's leadership that the Watchtower was built into the great theocratic giant that we know today. Um, if you've ever talked to Link, who's a member of the Watchtower Society, you know that he or she claims to be a theocratic kingdom, claims that it is a theocratic kingdom of God on earth. I'll get it out, these, these, these words. I wish people would just speak plainly, as Paul said. I didn't come to you with lofty words or, or, or lofty, I just spoke to you in plain English, right? I teach Christ and him crucified. That's all you really need to know. Anyways, it means this theocratic kingdom of God on earth means that a government uh, is ruled by God and God alone. So they believe that, that they are submitting to God's government and are part and member of God's government. Therefore, we'll get into their beliefs a little bit later, but I'll give you this tidbit. Therefore, they don't submit to any government here on earth. Now, they're, they're usually law-abiding citizens, Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't you know, go out and bunch of anarchists of any kind. But they don't serve in the military. They don't salute the flag. They don't celebrate like the 4th of July. They don't celebrate and, and they don't vote. They don't participate in governmental things that they consider government-ran organizations, man-made earthly governments. And it's not just our flag. Like if they're in any other country, they don't, it's, they don't take part of it because they're a part of God's government, not man's government. And to be part of man's government is sin because it goes against God's government. Go ahead, your face says that's the craziest thing I ever heard in my entire life. So why don't they go to Romans 13 and, and oh sorry, wrong. So why don't they celebrate uh, Jesus and the Christmas? Yeah, we're gonna get into that. Where's this truth? You you hold that one up there and we'll <clears throat> we'll get into that. I don't know what it'll be tonight, but we'll get into that. Are they subjected to taxes? Are they subjected to taxes? Well, yeah, they're subjected to taxes. But now, I, I will say this, now, because they stood up for their beliefs for not going to war, especially World War I and World War II, uh, they were put in prison. I mean, they, 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 they were persecuted, so to speak, and were put in jail. But then a lot of court cases came about after the fact, and it was determined that, no, 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 you are discriminating against these people who are based on their religious belief. And so, again, more religious freedoms were uh, put into law because people stood up for their religious beliefs, which we have here in the United States. So it shows you just how great this country is uh, to put up with folks that want to live here in the greatest nation in the world but not support it in its time of need. But whatever, it's your religious right. So, you know. Have you seen the movie Hacksaw Ridge? Yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. That's great. That's great. Why don't faith the pledge allegiance to either? Because it's a it's an, it's a government. You're pledging allegiance to, to a government, the, to a the United government. States of America. Well, we are under God. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, yeah. We, we don't even live in Nashville anymore. I know, I know, we sure don't. Mm -hmm. But seriously, get to it. They think that all other governments are satanic. Like they literally guess it. Why don't they go somewhere and start their own government? <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, I mean, I assume the same reason we don't. They have to be, you know, a Trump billionaire buy an island big enough for them all to. Yeah. Like, but if they're all supporting each other, you know. Right, right. You would assume. You would assume. Now, I will say, I will say, you know, Jehovah's Witness. Uh, last I checked, it only made up like zero point eight percent of the United States population. I mean, not a even, little, not even one percent, huh? A little, a little island. <laughs> a little island. Well, I mean, that's, you know, of how many billion people there are on the planet, you know, that's still a lot of folks. Yes, sir? You know, if they did, they'd have to set up some kind of government. Of course they would. Of course they would. Even if they went to set up their own government, 
they would in turn be being satanic themselves because it's not. So it makes sense, in my opinion, that they don't. Don't, don't do that because then they'd have to establish some sort of law, and right. therefore would be. Yes. So, so they're they're. I, I try not to bad mouth folks, but they're they're, you know. They're free riding, <laughs> there you go, off of you know the governments that are already established in the countries in which they are uh, have their religion, you know. So I, I'm pretty sure if somebody came and tried to rob them or murder them or do something to them, they would in turn call 911, mm -hmm. or if they had an emergency, they would mm -hmm. call an ambulance, yeah. or if the house was on fire, they would call the fire department. But all that is set up under mm -hmm. our laws, especially the 911 stuff for for calling the authorities out. But again. Uh, you know, those satanic beliefs can come and, you know, protect them in their time of need, I guess. I, when you try to start putting logic to some of this stuff, guys, I mean, really, it's, it, God has blessed you with the Holy Spirit to be able to see right through some of this. And that's just, that's how it is. Uh, yeah, they all believe governments are satanic, except for the true government of God, headquartered in Brooklyn, New York. They're headquarters of the Watchtower organization. That God came in 1914, invisible, Jesus, excuse me, not God, not God, because Jesus is not God in their belief. Uh, that the invisible Jesus returned, I don't know how he did anything because he's invisible, but he invisibly set up his kingdom and is currently in, in New York. So, uh, they don't celebrate Christmas because they deny the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Oh, you got it now. Yeah. Okay. And they don't celebrate Easter because they deny the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. Again, they believe he was just a spirit. An invisible spirit. Setting up an invisible kingdom. I, I'm trying not to laugh. I really not. I, okay. You, you, see, you, you, you done got me. You done got me. You done got me. I can't take it. Are you ready? Uh, let's see here. I'm in Luke chapter 24. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm in Luke chapter 24, starting with verse 35. It says, Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking down the road and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. So this is after Jesus died and rose again. You understand? This is after Jesus came back as an invisible spirit according to the Jehovah's Witness. So first off, they saw him on the road. He walked with them, but whatever. And just as they were uh, telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said, but the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. How do you see something that's invisible? Okay, we're going to keep going. Why are you frightened, he asked. Now, now we could say a voice could come out from, the, from nothingness, right? Because when Jesus was baptized, all of a sudden there was a voice from heaven that said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Right? But okay, moving on. Um, why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Invisible. Look at my feet. Invisible. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I'm not a ghost. Because ghosts, are you ready? Don't have bodies as you see that I do. <laughs> He's an invisible spirit. Yeah, right. That's not what the Bible says. No. That kills that right there. Mm -hmm. He literally says, I, I believe it's in, in King James, no. uh, he, flesh and bone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, are you guys in, by any chance, Luke, Luke, Luke 24? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in, uh, verse, uh, verse 39. Yes, sir, please. What does what 39 say? Behold, my hands and my feet, that is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones. Flesh and bone. Flesh and bone. Uh, Handle me. Yeah. That means poke, touch, no grab hold stuff. Yeah. Flesh and bone. The invisible spirit. Okay, sure. And as he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. Then he asked them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he ate it as they watched. Again, invisible spirit of 
okay, whatever. I think I've proved my point. I'll leave that alone. I'm trying to get in beliefs next week, but this is just, some of this stuff just, just if you know the word of God, if you just know what the Bible says, you wouldn't be able to be taken in by these crazy people. So let me get you to, to, to Rutherford. Uh, I'll, 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 under Rutherford's leadership, this is again, this is the second guy, um, the name Jehovah's Witnesses began to be used. He said that uh, they would do this to vindicate the true meaning of Jehovah since he claimed that Jesus Christ is not God and the Holy Spirit is not God, but Jehovah alone is God. So they don't believe in the Trinity whatsoever. Right? It's hard to, it's hard to. So we're going to skip over the, because we'll get into a little bit of it next week about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but there's a bunch there. Um, Rutherford is also famous for his many prophecies. It, oh, yes, sir. So if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, isn't that blaspheming? Supposed to be, and it's an unpardonable sin. Thank you very much. Yep. 100%. The only sin that can't be forgiven, or won't be, maybe not can't, but won't be. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rutherford was also famous. Kind of start lining up with that stuff we just read about Balaam, right? About that they lead people into sin and all these things. Anyways, he was famous uh, for his many prophecies. In fact, he prophesied that the patriarch, <laughs> come on now, are you ready for this one? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would return visibly to the earth to help promote the kingdom of God. I don't have that anywhere in the Bible. Like, I'd love to take you to the scripture that he used to, to twist that around. <coughs> I ain't got it. I can maybe get you Isaiah coming back. But not Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Anyways, um, he was so sure of his prediction that he built a large mansion in San Diego, California. Oh boy, what is For Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to live in when they would return sometime between 1925 and 1929. He predicted... Again, these people setting dates. So it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, three of them. Three. Some kind of twisted trinity. They're the, the patriarch or whatever of the king. Yes, sir, Becca. If the capital's in New York, why is he building a mansion in California? Because <laughs> Alabama won't let it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a great question. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't search out that question. That's a great question. Um, but I can tell you this. 1929 came and went, and guess what? No Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, that's because there's a the stock market fell. Must have been. Must have been. So what did he do with the mansion? What do you think he did with the mansion? Obviously, he had to move into it himself. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have this big old building just sitting empty. So, yes, he, uh, he moved into the mansion himself. Uh, and he lived there until he died in 1942. Again, another false prophet. Any other false prophet scriptures you got back there, Dad? Hell yeah. No. Oh. My, my favorite one. Let's, let's go to your favorite false prophet scripture. Okay. It's, a, this is, it's, it's in 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles. I want to go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18, 10 through 24. Uh, but it's, it's also in 2 Kings. So if you've heard this somewhere, you might have heard it in 2 Kings. But, Second Chronicles chapter 18, 10 through 24. Whatever you're right. And Zedekiah, son of Shaniah, uh, made for himself. Now yours might start with a K, mine starts with a C, according to what version you're in, for his dad. Made for himself horns of iron, said, Thus saith the Lord, With these you shall push the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so and so and said, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and triumph. The Lord will give into the hand of the king. And the messenger went to summon Micaiah and said to him, Behold, the words of the prophets with one accord are favorable for the king. Let your word be like the, the word of one of them and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, what may God say that I will speak? And when he had come to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to do battle, or shall we refrain? And he answered, Go up and triumph. They will be given into your hand. But the king said to him, How many times shall I make you swear that when you speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep 
that have, have no shepherd. And the Lord said, they have no master. Let each return to his home in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? And Micaiah said, Therefore he hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab, the king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramath Gilead? And one said one thing, and the other said another. Then his spirit came forward and stood before the Lord, saying, I will entice him. The Lord said to him, By what means? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Mm -hmm. And he said, You are the you are to entice him, and so you shall succeed. Go on and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these your prophets. The Lord had declared disaster concerning them. Then Zedekiah, son of Chenai, came near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, which way, did, which way did the Spirit of the Lord go from me to speak to you? And Micaiah said, Behold, you shall see on that day when you go into the inner chambers to hide yourself. Wow. So we have all these prophets gathered around telling the king, You're going to be successful. You're going to be successful. Go, go, be successful. Oh, but then the true prophet of God showed up. And of course, you know, he's been forewarned. Now everybody else is telling the king he's going to be successful. So when you get in there, you say the same thing too. Peer pressure. And he says, as surely as the Lord lives, I'll only tell what the Lord tells me to tell. Of course, when he gets in there, the king says, what are we going to do? And he says, sure, go. Yeah, we're going to be victorious. Uh -huh. yeah. The king's like, didn't I tell you? Tell me the truth. So he tells him what the Lord says. No, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to lose this fight. I saw the sheep scattered without a shepherd because they had no master because the master was dead. You're going to die. You're going to lose this battle. And what they do, they slapped him. They arrested him. They threw him in prison. And what's he told? If he comes back, I was wrong. Otherwise, somebody can be prepared to let me out because he ain't going to come back. And, of course, the prophecy was correct. All those other people were wrong. And they were wrong, as you heard, because they were being deceived on purpose. Because it was time for that guy to go. You know, and the guy put horns on. And he made a big show of it, you know. He did. I mean, With these horns, you'll yeah, board you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And made a big show of it. Like some of the problems today, they just make a big show of it. But it had nothing to do with God, see. Yeah. It had nothing to do with God. And the poor guy... Just shot an arrow up in the air. Just shot it up there. Yeah, if you know the rest of the story. That's yeah. how, that's how, yeah. It randomly, a soldier shot an arrow into the air, and it randomly hit right in the spot where the armor came together and had an opening, and the arrow pierced him, and he says, Get me out of here! And he gets on a chariot, and away they go, and he dies. Died that very day, yeah. Yeah. You think God doesn't know what's going to happen? You think he doesn't say, hey... But he warned him, if you go to war, you're going to die. And then, of course, you know, the true prophet of God said, hey, you're going to find out. You slapped me about it and asked me, you're going to find out. We're going to hide in that cave. And, of course, they were all hiding in the cave. People went in there. Anyways. False prophets aren't just in biblical times. That's what I'm trying to show you. These guys in Jehovah's Witness, the one that started it, get it now. Now, he started it because he did not like what the Bible said and could not reconcile what the Bible says with what the Bible says, with how he thought it should go. In his mind, it should be one plus one equals two, and God says, no, one plus one can equal zero because I paid the price. But without that one, one standing by itself can equal eternal damnation because you didn't have Jesus Christ put in Christ. And he was like, that just can't be. And that started his, his descent. I, I, I talk about a guy I knew that he was on fire for God, a good Christian man, and his, his, one of his family members came out of the closet to be a homosexual, and he couldn't reconcile that, that God would send that person to hell for their sins and he left the church, left everything, 
Of course, we read in Scripture here not too many Sundays ago, the Lord says, I didn't come to bring this, but to bring that, the sword. He was talking about the word. Father uh, against son, brother against brother, etc., etc. Yeah, because any man who chooses family over me will not get in. It's not worthy of me. That's what he said. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, eventually, Rutherford moved into his mansion and he died in 1942. Again, another false prophet. It then led to a guy named uh, Nathan H. I'm guessing it's Kor, K-N-O-R, but it might be Nor. I, I don't know. I don't get pronunciations on this. K-N-O-R-R, -O -O excuse me, K-N-O-R-R. -R. I'm going to call him Kor, just because I don't know any better. <clears throat> it was under Kor's leadership uh, that it developed, uh, you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses Watchtower and all that developed into a strong missionary outreach all over the world. Uh, let's see here. They, they did their own translation of the Bible. This is where the New World Translation comes in under Kor's leadership. Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they claim that five Greek scholars in the Watchtower organization did the translation. But it becomes quite obvious to anyone who knows Greek or Hebrew that there were gross errors in the translation. It's obviously produced as a conscience attempt to make the Bible fit preconceived Jehovah's Witnesses theology. So when you read their Bible, if you know enough about the Word of God, you can find where the errors are and where things line up. So uh, this fellow Kor, he didn't make any prophecies for a really long time. He started in uh, 1942 uh, with the organization. Then it wasn't until 1966 he finally couldn't contain himself and he had to start prophesying. <clears throat> and... Uh, he began to prophesy through the Watchtower and Awake magazines. His first major prophecy was that in the year 1975 was going to be the end of the age and that Armageddon would occur at that time, 1975. Anybody here old enough to remember 1975? Oh, yeah. Did Armageddon come in 1975? 76. 76? Was he predicting your birth? No, no. <laughs> ah! We're not the same again. Good job, good job, good job. Way to hold your peace. Anyways, so, but here's the thing. So they had a big falling out because finally members saw that, hey, this guy predicted Armageddon was going to happen in, in 1975. And uh, in 1976 and 77, over that period of time, over a million Jehovah's Witnesses left the Watchtower organization. Finally, people started catching on. Hey, man, this miss, miss, these people are crazy. They've been wrong, 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 wrong again. How many times have we wrong? And of course, you know, it makes me wonder of the people that were being fooled. What did they do thinking that in 75, it was going to be the end of the age and Armageddon was going to start? Did they run up credit card debt, assuming they were going to have to pay for it? Did they sell all they had? Did they go crazy wild with sin? thinking, okay, well, it's going to end at the last minute, I'll be fine. And they ended up with STDs or pregnant or, you know, uh, divorced or, you know what I'm saying? Like all the different consequences that could come of sin that, that are not necessarily what you want. You know, of all the things, you know, gambling debt, uh, who knows? You know, homeless and on the streets. I, I don't know. I didn't get into it, but it's just my thought. Of, I can imagine, you know, human nature, if you think the world's going to end, all the stupid stuff that humans would do, thinking, Oh, we only got 20 minutes left. Go crazy. You know, it's the end of the world. So, anyhow, uh, this guy was also, again, another false prophet. Uh, I guess he couldn't predict Jesus was going to come back. He couldn't predict Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were going to come back. So it had to be Armageddon. I mean, that's the only thing. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses are constantly in this thought that we're in the last days. They do have that going on. They think that we're in the end, in the end times, and you know, in that regard, I think they're right. But I think we're talking two different end times. Uh, they think like the millennial reign has already started. Mm -hmm. So after a certain a thousand year time, Jesus, I guess, is going to come back again, invisibly, and set up his kingdom here on earth. So, uh, with that, 
And I, I want to say something like 1935, somewhere around there. I'll, I'll bring you this maybe next week when I talk about their beliefs, uh, if, I can, if I can remember. Uh, but if not, I'll give you this nugget, and if you want to look it up, you can. The 144,000 thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they have 144,000. It's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's in Revelation. Of course, Revelation is symbolic. So when it says 12,000 from this tribe and 12,000 from this tribe, and, and they end up the 12 tribes of Israel, each having 12,000 to make 144,000, mm -hmm. which is exactly how it's going to be, literally exactly the way it says it's going to be. Mm -hmm. They said, no, that's all symbolic. And so um, they started doing things to promote end times uh, <coughs> to, to be able to get more followers. Well, they eventually hit the 144,000 mark because you know the world was going to end, Armageddon's coming, so you need to get in before it's too late. Well, once they hit 144,000 followers and members, oh no, now we're full. Nobody else gets to go to heaven, according to their belief. So then they started promoting that you're going to be here on earth, and eventually it's just going to be a paradise. And so you need to get saved so you can live in this paradise on earth. But anybody pre like 1935 or something that. Uh, uh, they're all in the 144,000. You're not. So anybody like me, I was born in 1982. I have no hope of going to heaven because the the seats are full. It's already no. Uh, yeah, 144,000 has already been hit according to their records. The rapture doesn't apply to that. Right. Exactly. No rapture. Right. So, anyways, I don't know why anybody would want to be a part of their organization today. But if, if you just do a little bit of history, you can see false prophet after false prophet after false prophet, which has led people to sin, 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 sin. Now, on the flip side of that, if you choose to be a Jehovah's Witness, and, or excuse me, you reject to be a Jehovah's Witness, and you don't get saved, again, they believe through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. So that's where there's some fuzziness there. Next week I'll talk about their beliefs and what, what the difference is there. Um, you know, because Jesus and Michael the Archangel are the same. Anyways, you just cease to exist. There is no hell. You just cease to exist. You go extinct, basically. And if you just, just chew on that for just a few minutes in your mind, well, if there's no hell, because everywhere the Bible says hell, they believe that's really the grave. There's no eternal punishment or fire or damnation. Then why did Jesus go to the cross with and pay such a terrible, terrible price of being tortured and beat and whipped and eventually crucified? What was the point of that? Why did he need to pay such a high price? I mean, he could have just died and just. If we just needed a simple sacrifice, then we just, Jesus could have, somebody cut his throat, we're done. Shoot him with an arrow, he, right? But no, he paid the price that we deserve to pay because that was our punishment being put on him. So then Jesus' sacrifice is really pointless if there's no hell and if the wages of sin is just to cease to exist because that's what they believe. You just go extinct. And they can just start committing jihad. They can just do, yeah, I mean, really. So if you don't accept being a Jehovah's Witness, if you if you reject Jesus' message, then there's really no punishment. There's really no nothing. Then what's the point? Except for, hey, I, I think I'm not going to check out this paradise thing later. But if you do accept Jesus, and his, his, then you have to do good works. So that's the only way to get in. Is through the organization and do what they say and live how they say to live. So it's once again another one of those works-based works, works based religions. Uh, similar to Islam, similar to every jihad, uh, uh, Buddhist and Hindus, what you deny, what you give up, what you, it's works, 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 works. I'm trying to be good enough. And live how something other than the Bible tells you to live. It's the watchtower organization that gets the key over everything. Anyhow. Uh, next week we'll talk more about what they believe, we'll talk about the cross, uh, we'll talk about Jesus and that thing that I just said about the Archangel Michael um, and that interesting belief. 
Uh, we'll talk about uh, quite a quite a bit of hell. We'll talk about quite a few things, and uh, in that, we'll try to get some of your questions answered again about what they believe about uh, babies and, and things of that nature. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any now that, now that I put that out there, any questions that I can or cannot answer against that I can get you these answers next week uh, if I don't have them tonight. I just got a question. We're gonna ever touch base on like Scientology? Yes, one hundred percent. And then have you hit Mormon yet? Or Nope, nope, that. oh, that's coming. That's coming. So uh, I think all you missed was Islam being out for, for your search. And uh, <laughs> anyways, so any, any other questions? Yes, yes, sir. Paul, yes, sir. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of ironic that uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses refuse to uh, acknowledge any governing by any government, but yet their doctrines for Jehovah's Witness is established by the governing body. <laughs> yes, indeed. There's all kinds of things when you start again trying to dig into it. They were, went to jail because they don't believe in government, but then they, they used the government to go to court to get the laws of the government to recognize that. Anyway, it's a, it's a total mess. Total mess. Any any other things? Anything we want to find out about Jehovah's Witness? Any, 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 if you got family, if you got friends. Isn't there something about blood? They want to take blood transfusion. There is something about blood, uh, consuming of blood. Um, yep, we can get into that as well. Uh, last call. Anything else? They believe in baptism. Do they believe in baptism? Mm -hmm. Yep, we'll, we'll get into that. Okay. We'll get into that next week. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. Then next week we'll we'll talk more about their beliefs and uh, how it compares to the Word of God. Hopefully, it'll just be one week. But I've already gotten a little bit um, <clears throat> passionate when talking to some other pastors about it, and uh, <laughs> I got very excited. I can't help myself. It's just crazy to me. It's the word of God. Just read it, and you'll know. You won't be fooled. But they won't read it. They just won't read it. So, anyways, all right. Then, uh, yep, that'll be the end for tonight.